Since the dawn of civilization, the sun has had a profound impact on our lives. It shapes our sense of time, it affects our health. We've tried to harness its power and reveal its secrets. The sun has long been a source of fascination and wonder, but for most of history, we knew almost nothing about it. The sun's secrets were hidden behind its dazzling glare. But there are hints going very far back in history of people seeing things on the surface of the sun. In ancient Babylon, in the 7th century BC, there are records written on clay tablets of people talking about seeing white spots on the surface of the sun. But it was only with the invention of the telescope in the early 1600s that the sun started to be studied in detail. There was a vicious debate between two astronomers, Galileo Galilei and Christoph Scheiner. Galileo argued that sunspots were part of the sun itself, whereas Scheiner, who agreed with the church's view of the universe, believed they were the shadows of planets passing in front of the sun. Eventually, Galileo persuaded Scheiner that sunspots were really on the sun's surface, but the argument was so bitter that Scheiner ended up giving evidence against Galileo at his trial by the Inquisition. In the 19th century, there was a boom in solar astronomy, particularly as people believed there was a connection between the number of sunspots on the sun and crop yields. Amateur astronomers and observatories began to watch the sun, recording the dynamic features on its surface from sunspots to eruptions, first of all in sketches, paintings, and later in photography. Here we have a selection of works in the Science Museum art collection. These are not simply representations, they are working tools that artists and astronomers used to understand what they were looking at and also to communicate that to an increasingly fascinated public. Best known for his invention of the steam hammer, James Naismith was an important industrialist in Manchester, but after he retired to Kent in the 1850s, he turned to art and astronomy. He built his own telescopes and he was particularly interested in the surfaces of the moon and the sun. Here we're looking at two paintings of sunspots that Naismith produced in the 1860s. He's interesting for two reasons. Firstly, because he was the first astronomer to recognise that the sun has what we would now call a granular surface. You can see this kind of mottled effect around the sunspots in his paintings. He called these willow leaf patterns, and here you can see how he's using his brush strokes to understand how these might be layered and built up on the surface of the sun. In the 1850s, the first telescope designed specifically to photograph the sun was built, the Q photoheliograph. And in 1860, it was lugged into rural Spain to capture one of the first ever photographs of a total eclipse of the sun. The application of photography transformed our understanding of the sun, revealing features that couldn't previously be observed. Another big question in the 19th century was what was the sun made of? People believed that this question perhaps would never be answered, but in the early 19th century, people discovered that when sunlight was split using a prism into a rainbow spectrum, very fine dark lines could be seen crossing the band of rainbow colors. People realized eventually that these dark lines were the unique signatures of different chemical elements in the sun's atmosphere. And using this technique, now known as spectroscopy, people gradually discovered elements in the sun that were familiar on Earth including carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. A hundred and fifty years ago, the astronomer Norman Lockyer used this spectroscope to discover a new element in the sun. He realized that this line didn't match any known element at the time. He discovered a new element, which he called helium, after the Greek god of the sun, Helios. This is the first time that an element was discovered in space before it was discovered on Earth. The sun's activity can also directly affect us here on Earth. In 1859, a huge eruption from the sun covered the world in the most spectacular auroral lights ever seen. At the same time, the telegraph network, which was the main means of long distance communication, was disrupted with sparks flying from cables and operators even getting electric shocks. This is the first recorded incident of what is now known as a solar storm and a major storm on the scale of 1859 would be absolutely devastating in the modern world. A major solar storm has the power to knock out satellites and electricity grids for days, weeks, or even months. 
And if you think how reliant we are on those technologies, the consequences could be really quite severe. Predicting when the next major solar storm will hit is now one of the main aims of solar research. In August 2018, NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe, an ambitious mission that will take a spacecraft closer to the sun than ever before, flying through the sun's outer atmosphere and enduring temperatures of up to 1400 degrees Celsius. And in 2020, the European Space Agency will launch the Solar Orbiter, which will take ultra-high resolution images of the sun from within the orbit of Mercury. Despite all our progress in science and technology, we still remain utterly dependent and at the mercy of the sun, which even in the modern world remains a source of awe and wonder.